So uh, I'm happy to be here and to share the Headless Way with you. And uh, I tend to uh, like to go straight to the experience and then we're on the same page. And uh, so just notice you can see your face on the screen out there. You're looking at your face. But uh, this is meditation, really, attention. Whilst you're looking at your face and the other faces there, notice where you are. You don't see your face. You might see a bit of your body, but it's headless. Your mind is anyway. And uh, I, I can't see anything above here. It's just open. So uh, if, if you take your hands and just hold them out in front of you like this, see? And what you're going to do it, 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 to guide your attention to your true nature, this open space that uh, I think Lillian was talking about, this wide open space, that you're going to move your hands back either side of your head, but you're going on the screen, you'll see them go past your head. But the point is to notice what's happening where you are. So you bring them back and I see them getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and then they disappear. So you just keep going and notice from your, you know, where, where you're looking from, your hands disappear, and then you bring them forward and they come out of the great void. Yeah. And uh, this is being aware, I would say, of your true nature, who you really are. Uh, and when you look on the screen, you can see what you look like. That's your appearance, which you're familiar with, see? So just uh, one of the experiments is to point, which is a way of directing your attention. So if you point at your appearance on the screen, just use your finger and look down your finger. So it's attention, it's directing your attention. Well, there's your appearance, that's, that's clear. Now, while you're looking there, point back at the place you're looking out of, which is your side of the screen, and uh, look at your finger now and I think you'll find you don't, you don't see an appearance here. I don't, anyway. I'm pointing at nothing or wide open space or awareness. So th this is bringing your attention to back to the place you're looking out of. And uh, we call it, I call it looking out of a single eye. What does that mean? Well, if again, if it's quite good to have your picture on the screen, your appearance, because you can contrast your appearance with your reality, what you look like through the camera at a distance and what you are at zero distance, you see, that's the, it's very simple. And when you look at yourself on the screen, then you see you're looking out two little eyes in a head. Well, are you or yourself looking out of two eyes or out of one? So what you do, very simple is you make a pair of glasses like this you just put your fingers together you go put your fingers together and you're going to look at them and you see two holes there and now you you are going to this little test you see so now you put them on and watch what happens to the dividing line well i find the dividing line disappears and the two become one you just try that again you it's such a simple thing but it, it, it is simple you bring them, and there's no dividing line here. And you're looking at a single eye or single opening. Now, uh, this, I would say, is a nonverbal experience. I'm using words and gestures to communicate it. But the actual experience, I would say, is nonverbal. But obviously, we need language to talk about it. And I say that uh, it is just, we're going to, we, we'll, we'll do some non-visual things. It's not just about seeing, it's about hearing and sensing and all the other centers too, but it's easiest to start with vision. And um, just, it is so available. Notice you can't see your face now. Now, what do you see instead? Well, I see a room and trees outside. I see the world. Instead of my head, I see the world. And uh, in language, 
I say that's a non-verbal experience and you can't get it wrong. I mean, you can't see your head uh, unless you tell me you can. And then I'd be very interested to find out what that's like. But <laughs> I, I uh, convinced you can't. And instead you see the world. So I you say, people say, I don't get it, Richard. I don't get it, Richard. See, and I say, well, can you see your head? Is it now? Do you see the world instead? Yes. I say, you got it. Now, what I think they mean is, all right, I, I'm aware of that. Now you've pointed it out because a lot of people don't think about that. A lot of people go through their whole lives without really thinking about the fact that they can't see their head. And if someone does say something about it, they say, yeah, no, I know. And it doesn't mean anything. My job is to point it out and show you what it means or indicate what it might mean. But that's totally up to you. I can't, uh, you know, uh, do anything about that. I can only share what it means to me. But I, uh, so the first thing though is that uh, I, I can't imagine how you would not have the experience. But what people sometimes say is, yeah, but I don't feel anything. A bit like maybe Lillian was saying, you know, it, it's it, maybe it's just a trick. It's just too shallow, you know, it's too easy. I mean, it, that, that can't be enlightenment, you see. Uh, and uh, I, I, uh, I just don't feel what I think I should feel. Well, what is that? Well, I don't know. I feel I should feel enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? You know, peaceful, no more problems? I don't know. Well, uh, let me reassure you that um, this is not that. <laughs> this is a, a new, well, it's not. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, uh, I'm setting the bar very low here. Setting the bar very low. But, um, you know, it does correspond with, or you know, why is spiritual advice, which is give up on trying to get anywhere and just be where you are. See, what does that mean? Well, be awake without looking for results necessarily. You see, the paradox is if you relax into not being anything and not having anything, and in a way not wanting anything. It opens the door to tremendous riches. That's the paradox. <laughs> but you've got to test it out. So when people say, oh, it doesn't do anything for me, I, I say, well, I mean, it, 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 it's a bit like, this is the wrong analogy, but here, have this drink of vodka. This is terrible. Have this drink of vodka. Oh, it doesn't do anything for me. I say, wait <laughs> right <laughs> 10 minutes later oh my god you see it's like that with this you say oh it's nothing it's as clear as vodka you see it's as tasteless as vodka this you say well it doesn't do anything i say well, well wait well wait uh watch and pray you know what be vigilant stay with it and it will deliver you know, but anyway, that, that I've gone off on a bit of a tangent there. But uh, uh, the, but that is uh, that is the direction I'm going in. So, any questions at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lillian. I have a double vision from birth, and uh, so I switch. When I look, it switches automatically. It's only the right eye that sees distance. And if I look closer, it's the left eye that takes over. So somehow I'm always seeing a part of my nose. Unless I do, I do hold the head and yeah, well, relax the gaze. Say. Relax the gaze totally, and then... And then what? And then there's just... There are two things. <laughs> there is this miracle space, and there is a sense still. 
I am having the experience of this. Uh, okay. There is still that. Okay, yes. All right, I'll respond to that. Thank you. First of all, look at everybody, look at their nose. If you can close one eye, you know, I can see my nose. I close the other eye and I see the nose on the other side. But what is it attached to? Now, this is radical. It's radical. You look on the screen and, of course, you can see your nose is a single thing, tiny, in the middle of your face. But I look here, this is a huge thing that is sometimes solid and sometimes transparent, goes from the ceiling to the floor and is not attached to anything. It just comes out of nowhere. And the same on the other side. So people say, oh, I can see my nose. I know, but is it attached to anything? Not what you know, remember, imagine. That's not meditation. Meditation is being humble enough. You know, hum, you know. I think, I think that uh, here's some theory for you if, you, if you can manage it. There are four stages to our lives. The baby, the child, the adult, and the seer. The baby's headless. See, you're, you're pre-verbal. You have no idea what you look like. You came in like this. Now, as a baby, if you looked and saw your nose, you'd say, what's that? What's that hanging there? And there's another one there. You, you wouldn't have yet gone out and looked at yourself through the camera or through other people and see, imagine, you know, seeing, you, seeing your face from their point of view with your nose in the middle of your face and then sort of put that on like a mask. You haven't done that. As a baby, you've got a nose there, nose there, big, you know, you're just wide open, headless. You, you, you're just open, see, pre-verbal. Now, growing up is learning through language to see yourself as others, others, others see you, which you can never do directly. You can never see yourself directly. You walk around your whole life, you never see yourself directly. It's unnerving when you think about it. The only way you can become aware of what you look like is through others, through the shop window, through the camera. You look in the mirror. Well, what happens when you look in the mirror? You've seen those pictures of the, in, you know, the infant who looks in the mirror and then back and then round the back and then... That's not you yet. That's another infant. Who's that? And disappears, you see. Well, you were like that when you were very small. If, if you were very small and you were on this Zoom call, you, you, you wouldn't be thinking, that's me. You, you wouldn't know. A friend of mine years ago, her daughter was about five, I think, and uh, came home with a picture of her class at school, you see. And so mum went through all the faces. Who are you? Well, that's, that's Judy and that's Fred. And, and then, well, I don't know who that little girl is. It was her. She had not yet. You see, what we do, and you can do this with the, the picture on the screen and imagine it's a mirror. What you learn to do, in effect, because you can't see yourself, but now you can see your, yourself on the screen. See? Now, everybody tells you as you're growing up that what you see in the mirror is what you are here. They point at you. They can't, you can't see anything there. You're dependent on them to find out who you are. And they say, look in the mirror. And to begin with, you say, well, yeah, but that's over there. You see, like the infant. So, yeah, but that's... In effect, what you've got to do is reach in, get hold of the face, pull it out, stretch it because it's tiny, flip it inside out like a mask and put it on. And imagine now you're behind a face. You can't see your face. You're invisible. It's like being invisible. But you, so what you've got to do is learn to wear a mask. We call it playing the face game. You've got to put and walk around as if you're behind a face, you see, so that when someone looks at you, you have the feeling of, you know, they're not just looking into space. They're looking at somebody. But you've got to imagine that. And we forget it takes months and years to build, to get that face on properly, you see. But the, way, the reason why you are able to do it, because I sometimes tell this story that say you're an infant and you realize that in order to 
become a part of society, you have to get your face on because you have to know who people are talking to and all of that and what your name is and all, of, you know, everything that goes with that. You've got to somehow kind of wear this mask, hold this mask in front of you, you know, like at a mask ball and walk around with it until you don't have to think about it. But to begin with, you, it's quite a task because your default position is to be headless, is to be carefree, free of your appearance, just in the moment playing open, you see. So you, you but you, everybody is 24-7 is telling you, you see, that relating to you as if you're behind a face. So you realize you better, better concentrate and get that going. But to begin with, you can do it for about a second and then you forget. And you say to your little infant friend, you say, you, say, you know this thing about learning to be behind a face? Learning to be in a body, you see. Uh, I just can't do it. I can do it for about a second and then I forget. I'll never be able to do it. And your friend says, I oh, know, I'm just like that. I, and who, you know, I just can't do it. Ten years later, you, you, that's all you're doing. Why is that? That is because 24 seven people are telling you that's what you are. And you, you want to do it actually, because it's the only way to join in. You know, you want, you need a face, you need an identity to be able to operate and have a individual life and all of that, you see. So the first stage is headless without knowing anything other than that. The second stage is the child where you're learning to put that on and, uh, you know, for example, if you look at your face in the in the on the screen now and look look at your mouth, you see, it's a tiny little thing there. See, it's tiny. Now be aware of the sensations of your mouth. Well, the sensations. I mean, if you haven't yet learned to put your face on, how big are the sensations of your mouth? It's just kind of it's the you know it's the the Cheshire cat without the face, just the smile. It's just a sensation floating in in awareness. I mean, does it have a color? I can't see a color. How wide is it? Well, I mean, without any kind of memory of the mirror, I can't tell you. It's just floating there in the mouth. But you need to know where to put your food, you see. A, a baby, you know, the ice cream, oh, <laughs> because you haven't yet. So what you do, and this you can just uh, go through the process quickly of what you learn to do is, you look at the, the image of your mouth there. You see, it's tiny. So you've, and you've got the sensation somewhere here that has no color or shape. And the, the image of the mouth has no sensation. You've got to connect, marry the image there with the sensation here. So what you've got to do, I mean, it's tiny. And it's over there, you see. So you've got to imagine pulling it out, flipping it the other way around, making it the right size, and imagine now. Th now you see, if you uh, be aware of the sensation of your mouth, automatically you get an image. But you didn't have that when you were an infant. You've learned that, and you really need the image. I mean, you need if you don't have the image of your mouth, for example, you know, where would you put your food? But you've got a pretty good idea where the image, you've mapped it. Or where your forehead is, or the back of your head, or your back, you know, or your toe. But you have mapped all these sensations, the images in the mirror, photographs and what people have said, onto all these sensations. I mean, close your eyes now, you see. And if you were a baby and, uh, you know, just theoretically ask, how big are you? Well, you haven't got any map yet. How big are you on present evidence? I can't say. I mean, I, I, if someone told me, well, I think you're about five miles across, you know, or five centimeters, you, you can't. I, what shape are you? What shape? So you haven't yet got the image of your hand and your back and your mouth and your, you know, toes. You, what shape? I, can't, I, I don't know, you see. Now open your eyes, see, and there's the map on the screen. Well, you, you, over the years, you've mapped you, all your bodies. So now, baby is no, you know, no size, no shape, no color. 
you know, no, no surface dividing you off from the world. That is big. Because if you, as you learn, as, uh, second is the, the child, and you're learning to put this face on, well, you're learning to be behind the surface, aren't you? Which means that you're separate. If you look at someone else on the screen now, what you're learning to do, when you're a baby, you look at that face, you're just empty. You see, you're, you're invisible. You're, you're not self-conscious at all. You're, you, you could, you don't have language, but you say, well, the only face I've got is yours. So there's no division, no dividing line, no distance. Well, as a baby, you learn to take the, the imagine the image from the mirror and put it on. See, so you're learning to be in a body and behind a face. So by the third stage of the adult, you look in the mirror, that's you. You're walking around deeply convinced you're behind a surface, behind a face, in a body, born and will die. And when you look at someone else, it's automatic for you to think, I'm behind a face here and they're behind a face there. So we're like this, we're separate. All right, that is social relation. That's learning, you know, who I am and who you are. But now we're in the third stage where we are head to head, we're separate, I'm behind the face, you're behind the face, and I have completely forgotten about this wide openness. I've completely forgotten, I'm invisible in a way that I can't see myself. I'm acting as if I'm behind the face. See, so by the third stage, I mean the infants, I don't know how I'll ever do that. By the time you're adult, because it's 24 seven feedback about that, you, you do it. You, there's no option, but, you, you know, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. But we then think that that is who I am, who you are. I, I'm just Richard, and you're just Andrew. And, and you know, that, that, that's it. See, I, and I, wow. Wow, you see. Now, you could say that growing up, when you're a baby, you have no idea who you are. So growing up is finding out who who you are, the one in the mirror, you don't have a choice. You can't choose who's in the mirror. It's finding out which one of those you are, which of these on the screen you are. Oh, that's, that, oh, that's me, is it? Is that, is that me? You see, you didn't know as a baby. Learning to identify with that one, become that, you see, growing up is learning which one you are and then learning to, to take responsibility for being that one so that every, thing uh, that that one says is what I say and you know all of that what I am suggesting which is is nothing new it's a traditional suggestion but is in a new form with the experiments and with the, the headless way what I'm suggesting is that is not the end of the story of your growth it's half the story. Growing up is finding out which person you are and then learning to be that and act as if that's you. But don't stop there. That's not the end of the, the, the growth. The next stage of growth is called the seer. And that is reawakening to being invisible. Reawakening to what you are looking out of that no one else can see. Because you see, you're the only one that can notice your headless because everyone else sees your head. So that's why we are so convinced that we are behind a face because everyone on the planet is telling you that you do. And only you can see you don't. So who are you to you know, argue against, I think it's nine billion now, something like that. You know, I mean, you're, you're just you. They must be right. It can't mean anything that I can't see myself. Well, I'm here to say it means everything. It means everything. And uh, you, you are, what the Headless Way is, is about is saying, look, for a moment, put aside respectfully what everyone is saying you are, because they're not in a position to tell you what you are at center. They're in a position to tell you what you are at six feet. I, through the camera, I can tell you what you are and sincerely tell you what you are with your head, you see. But I say, but the question is not what you look like at this range, important as that is, but what are you at center, at zero? Now, only you are in a position to see that. Only I'm in a position to see what I am at 
you, you will tell me, oh, you've got a face for you. I say, I do for you, but for me, I don't. Now, I'm going to take that seriously. At least I'm going to pause and consider whether that is important. And uh, it, it, I, I am here to testify, if you like. It's hugely important. I mean, it makes sense. It's not just a trick. That's the work Douglas Harding did. For example, you say, Richard, we can see you've got a head. I say, you're over there. Why don't you tell me what I am at a bit closer range? You know, because range, rel relativity, it makes all the difference. So you come up to me and say, oh, from here, you're just a patch of skin. Oh, I said, but you're still not here. I want to know what I'm here. Come closer. You get the right instruments. Oh, at this very close range, your cells keep coming. Whoa, you're, you're a mo molecule. And I, my God, you've nearly disappeared. I say, well, surprise, surprise, you know, and I'm right at center and I've completely disappeared. Makes sense. You see. Now, if you were to go away from me and say, yeah, but let me see what you are from further away. Well, then you get London and then you get England and then you get Europe and then you get the planet, the star of the galaxy. And you go, oh my God, you're, you're a lot more things than we thought you were. Now, the thing is that I identify with Richard, you know, that layer of my body. But I identify with London, I identify with England, I identify with the, with the planet, even with the, the star. If we were attacked by another star, I'd be fighting for this star, Star Wars. So this makes sense. It makes sense scientifically that you're not just one layer, you are made of cells and you are part of greater bodies. It's all one system. You can't, you can't sit here and breathe without your cells, without the molecules that make your cells, without the atoms that make your molecules. We take, we take science seriously. But you can't sit here and breathe without your atmosphere or your sunlight, or even, I suggest, the, 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 whole, the whole galaxy, because it's one system. Now, the question is, what are you right at the center of all these layers? Well, only you can look, you see. And what the headless way is, that, that is a, a, a kind of modern scientific uh, context. And but, uh, to uh, reframing in that language, the old question, who am I? Know thyself, you see. Wake up, wake up. Wake up to what? Wake up to what you are. How do you do that? It's not about thinking primarily. It's about waking up. When you wake up in the morning, it's not a thinking thing. It's just, I'm awake. I'm, uh, that's now these experiments, you see. So uh, just look, point back again. We'll do some non-visual, but point back at the place you're looking out of, like I'm doing. Now you're pointing at the center of all your layers. You're pointing in the place that no one else can look at. Because you only you are your side of your finger. Now, do you see an appearance there? I don't. To put it in language, I, it's just space for the world. It's non-verb. It's a kind of silence. So, uh, this is about uh, asking and exploring what you are, what uh, uh, with the the entertaining the possibility that um, you, you, you uh, have um, accepted what society says you are, which is, which is important, and are overlooking uh, what you are in your own experience. So these experiments, Headless Way, is about reacquainting ourselves with our own point of view. And of course, you have to make some sense of it and connect it with the social view of you and, and all of that. But the primary thing is look for yourself. You see, what, do you, what do you see? What do you see? Not what you think or know. Because what you think or know is inherited from society. <laughs> you know, it's asking the con man for advice. <laughs> Now, uh, if you close...
close your eyes, uh, now you don't see all those people and uh, you're sort of on your own in a way. Uh, and uh, if you can put aside what, you know, society says you're small and you're a certain age and gender and shape and size and all of that, that's what society says. But just put that aside as if you're a baby, you know, that, that's just a way of encouraging you to be fresh and not go by what you've learned. Well, how big are you? Well, I, uh, I, I don't know. I can't say how big I am. You see, the darkness that you are aware of, how wide is it? I, I, I don't, I can't, I can't say. And, um, well, open your eyes, because uh, this is quite a good thing to do, to, to just uh, learn from the visual field and apply the lessons to the non-visual. So if you be aware of the whole field of view, so this is a bit like what Lillian was saying, you just relax, because soft eyes in martial arts. So that, I mean, you might be looking at, some, you're looking at something in the center of the field of vision, whatever that is. I don't, not particularly at the screen. I don't, I'm not asking you to look at the screen. Just look at anything. And then just notice that that's in the center of the whole field of view. And uh, the whole field of view is vast. I mean, uh, 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 you, don't just limit your view to tunnel vision, have panoramic vision. So that goes all the way out to the edge where it gets rather, it's not in focus like the thing in the middle. It fades out. All the way around, it fades out. Now, if you look back at uh, an object, your computer or whatever, you'll see it's got a boundary. It's got a hard edge. And there's something all the way around that boundary, you know, the background. Any object you look at has got a boundary and a background. All right? Now, soft eyes, be aware of the whole field of vision all the way to where it fades out. Uh, which I'm going to call an edge, that where, you know, the per periphery. But is there anything around that edge, beyond the edge, above it, below it, to the left, to the right? You know, is, it, is the whole picture set against another background? Well, no, it's just hanging in space. There's nothing above it, I say. So uh, I would say that the picture, the view, is not contained inside something bigger. You see, and if you look at any object again and, and compare its size with another object, it's, uh, it's relative, it's either bigger or smaller. In about the same size, I suppose. And, and look at two other objects. You just easy to see which is bigger and which is smaller, because it's relative. Because the object that is bigger than the smaller one, you can compare it with another one and now it becomes smaller. It's relative. Now look at the whole field of view, just relax back and there you are, the whole visual field. How big is it? Well, there isn't a second to compare it with. I don't see a second. So I can't say, well, it, it's big, bigger or smaller. It, it's how big is it? There's nothing to compare it with. It's incomparable. See, so how wide is it? It's as wide as east is from west. You see, it's just it's as wide as it's wide. It's not, I can't say. So the third thing to notice is that uh, if you pick two objects again in the visual field, you can see a distance between them. So between any two objects is a distance. Now, again, relax, be aware of the whole visual field. It's very relaxing. Soft eyes, relaxing, you see. Now, be aware of the whole visual field. How far away is it? Well, I mean, where from? Anywhere you might measure from is within the field. So there's nowhere to measure from. I can't say how far it is. I can't say where it is. So this is putting into language an nonverbal experience. But I say it's not a visual field. It's not inside anything. Can't say how big it is. I can't say how far away it is. It's, I mean, it's, it's either right here or I don't know, 
All right, now close your eyes and be aware of the darkness. Is it inside anything? I, I, I don't perceive it as inside anything. Whether that's inside a head or inside a bigger picture, it's not. I don't, I don't, nothing around it. Now, how big is it? You know, how wide is it? How big? Well, it, it, there isn't a second to compare it with. Single. And how far away is it? Well, from where? They're trick questions, aren't they? All right, so this is being, this is looking for yourself. You see, this is not going by what society says. You, society isn't right where you are. So, you know, saying, well, actually, what the answer to this one, Richard, is, is it's inside your head and it's, you know, it's just behind your eyes and it's only about eight, eight inches across. So there you go. But society, that, how could society tell you? I mean, honestly, it, it's just not in a position to say. You've got to be a rebel and look for yourself, you see. Now, uh, if you then attend to the field of sound, so that's the, the kind of field of vision with your eyes closed, the darkness. Now the field of sound, all the sounds going on. So that's my voice and then background sounds and see whatever sounds you can hear and uh, soft sounds and loud sounds and see now how big is the whole field of sound well there certainly isn't a second i don't find a second to compare it with now are those sounds happening inside any kind of container you know well society so they're in your head i suppose or in your ear wait a minute the sounds are just coming out of silence. So I don't find them inside anything. How, how far away is the sound of my voice? Well, from where, you see? Where, how far? It, I, I, nothing. I find nowhere to measure it from. And even, you know, the, the close sound or the distant sound, they're equally here. You know, the, the, there's no, the equally, I am equally unable to measure. Now, I find uh, that the sounds are going on in the same space as the darkness. You know, the sounds are coming out of nowhere and going back or out of silence. This is language, you see, and the darkness that is coming out of nowhere or happening in nowhere or in, or in the great void or in the silence or awareness, you see. And now you move your attention to body sensations. Well, we, we, we've... We've looked a bit at what it's like to be a baby. We'll go back to being a baby in a way, just so that you can put aside all the knowledge that society has given you, very useful, but you can put that aside to, so you can uh, look for yourself. So all, all these body sensations, uh, let's call it the field of sensation. No. Well, how big is it? Or if you identify with the sensations, how big are you? You know, how, how big is the field of sensation? Well, there isn't a second to compare it with for a start. And it's a bit like, you know, you get soft eyes, you get soft darkness, you get soft sensation. I mean, it is just a, a very wide, you know, like wide-eyed peripheral vision. It's the same as sensation, very relaxing. I mean... Uh, the idea that your sensations are in a tiny little box, you know, in your body, is to constrict them, isn't it? And, and feel small. Well, put aside that image and have soft sensations, soft body, you know. Well, I mean, you're vast. I mean, that's relaxing. It's like, you know, uh, suddenly, you know, you, you throw the tangled fishing line into the water and it expands because there's no limit in the water. Just, it just keeps expanding. Well, well, it's a bit like that with sensation because there's no boundary. It's not, you're not inside anything. I say I'm not. So, I mean, whoa, you're as big as the universe, you know, however big that is. And you don't have to force this. You, like, you don't have to force the fishing line to expand in the water, you know. Just notice, you know, how wide are you? Oh, 
can't say. How far away are these sensations? Well, there's nowhere to measure from. And are the sensations happening in a different space than the sounds or the darkness? Well, I, I say no, it's just one space, one awareness. You see, you're conscious, you're aware. Well, how many awarenesses do you actually experience? You hear about mine, you hear about Andres's, but how many do you, I experience one. It doesn't have my name on it. And uh, the sounds are in it, and the darkness is in it, and uh, the sensations are in it, and my thoughts and feelings. So uh, you might be aware of a particular feeling or judgment or thought, you know, or a number, think of a number. And that's kind of at the center, just as when you're looking, you've got something in the center of the field of view. But just relaxed into big mind and just you're vaguely aware of any other thoughts going on and you 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 can't see them directly it's like you can't see the edge of the field of vision directly and you don't try you know you can't and it's the same with your mind i would suggest that some things are, are more clear up front of stage and the rest is sort of vague and that is it that how it is you, you it, it kind, of, kind of fades out and um, so then one asks, you know, how big is this mind? Well, there isn't a second to compare it with. And is it inside anything? Well, I find it's not, you see, and it's again like your body. If you put aside the image of your body, well, how big is it? It just uncontained, it just sort of expands. It's the same with your mind, I, I find. You know, you, it's soft mind, soft eyes, soft. Hearing, soft sensing, soft mind. See, and uh, you, you do, you're not trying to pin it down. You can't pin it down. Where do your thoughts come from, you see? Are, are they coming out of a small head or brain? Or do they just pop up out of what Zen calls no mind you know, and go back? Very fertile. The no mind, you know, the nothingness, it, it sounds negative, isn't it? Just incredibly fertile. It just, it's thinking all the time and it's feeling and it's making sounds and it's, you know, got sensation. It's just full. Even with your eyes closed, it's just dizzy. dizzy. You know, it's just rich. Like a, you know, summer's day with insects is just busy. It's a lot, a lot going on in this absolutely clean clear silence that's the two aspects you know you point back and you can't see anything but you point out you see field of view you here is no mind but it's full of mind and it's full of sensations and uh still with eyes closed now uh, i'm going to suggest you can instead of just doing soft looking or soft hearing or uh, you know soft eyes or soft sensing soft being soft being so you don't focus on any particular sense so i'm not asking you to send you know focus on thoughts or sounds but just to have no preference but you will get things announcing themselves but you but you kind of interested to see whether it, you know a thought and then a memory, and then a sensation, and there will be something, so you don't have to worry. There will always be something. But now you, you know, you, you've, uh, soft being is, you, you just, your being uh, is out in the box, out in the water, uh, you know, it's being just expanding, or no, no boundary. I mean, where is your boundary? This is completely natural. This is what you've always been. This is nothing new. Except every time you wake up and be aware of it, it's new. Because its nature is fresh. It's not old. It, your true nature doesn't get old. Because I mean, how old are you? 
putting aside what society says, well, I can't say, I'm now. I'm, you know, how long is now? How old is now? It's just, it's just now. It's delicious. It's fresh. It's always now. It's always fresh. So, and you, you don't have to try. It's just, you, you can't make it happen. It just already is happening. you just got to acquaint yourself with it and know, you know how to find it. And it's the same for us all. This is where we come together. Our, what is arising within the space is different for each of us. But the space itself has, uh, has, does not have an address or a name or a gender or an age, you know, and uh, uh, it's a great mystery how it's the same in us all, yet we have different experiences in it. But this is where we come together, the ground of being, the, the, our common ground is this soft being, this, this openness, you see, or whatever you want to call it. That's, and so that where we come together now, it, you know, don't we all want to really meet somehow, yet we may keep our differences, you know? Well, here it is. It's the perfect combination of being uniquely different and meeting utterly. So uh, it's clearly are not two consciousnesses. Yet I respect that what you are experiencing in this consciousness is different from mine. So now I'm going to, uh, in a moment, ask you to open your eyes, you see, so just take a deeper breath. And open your eyes. And it's still true, you see, uh, it's still true, you're, you're soft beings. Now, one of the things I think Lillian raised it is, but what about, I still feel separate, for example. So do I. See, I, I in the sense that I identify with Richard, you know, in a, at that level. As the soft being, uh, there's no differences. But my view out is mine, you see. Now, does the feeling of being separate operating your life, you know, wanting this, not what, does that stop you from being aware of soft being, of your true nature? No, the two go together. People think that, it, when you're aware of your true nature, which is this vastness, you see, in which everything's happening, there's no dividing line, that you should somehow no longer feel separate or not feel self-conscious or not suffer or have problems. I say that. that's not my experience, that they go together. And this is uh, you as your true nature living an individual life. Any questions or comments or reflections to share? Yes. I would think that the sheer uh, very powerful momentum of uh, I am solid and this is there. When uh, doing what you propose with our eyes closed, especially for Mahamudra practitioner is yeah, yes, 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 fantastic especially working with sound, I found particularly interesting. But as soon as we open our eyes, so I would, my question is, um, when one works with this, does one somewhat could 
would need to put more emphasis on um, close eyes perception so that there's some, some habit, some um, familiarity so that the potential for, for this to be with eyes open and yeah, I guess one will have to. Well, I think this is an individual thing and you find out what works for you. I love doing, uh, you know, being aware of my true nature with eyes closed, but I find it uh, as easy, if not easier with eyes open uh, and uh, certainly practical, you know, because you can't spend much of your time with eyes closed. But when I, you know, look at a person, when I'm with a person, I, I meditate. And I notice, am I, you know, put it in words, it's non-verbal. Is it face to face? Or is it face to no face? Or is it face to no face? Am I looking out of two little holes in a head or out of one vast openness, one vast openness, single eye? Am I walking down the street or is the street moving through my stillness? Oh, street moving through my stillness. Now, so this is very practical. As, as you know, I, I love the closed eye, but you know, very limited application in terms of practical, you, you can't live like that. So do what works for you. The other, th I'll give you some tips if, if I may. I mean, do, do that, do whatever works, go with it. You know, uh, um, someone was telling me about learning to play the piano, you know, learn to play songs you like. <laughs> you know, because you'll want to do it. Well, I mean, if you like that close thing, do it. If you like it, if it, you know, it will it will grow you. It will it will build your energy. Now, uh, I uh, find that the experiments help me be aware of that with eyes open. Uh, and uh, uh, the but um, it, here's um, so that that. You know that that's my uh, my point of view, but I will add something here, which because the the question might be well, all right, this is very obvious, but how do I actually live consciously from the for, from this as this throughout the day? You know what what how, that's the point, isn't it? You want to live from this. You don't want to just glimpse it and then not think about it or be aware of it. So how do you do it? Well, I mean, that's one way is to uh, generate it in it as your eyes close. Another is to, you know, just sort of make a habit when you're with people, notice your face and everything. I mean, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. There's nothing in the way. It's loving. It's loving, you know, or when you're driving, go on a drive and just relaxing to being still, you know, I mean, it's a pleasure. It is soft eyes you know it's relaxing it's relaxing yeah with, with you know with, with in company you're 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 soft open you know you're being everybody without saying anything all right so those 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 things but uh i'll give you um an idea here uh, and it is that when you're, as I said, when you're a baby, you don't know who you are. You, you're soft being without knowing anything else. And growing up is learning to get into hard being and to get an edge and a bound, a hard edge, really, to get a hard edge and to be separate, you see. And uh, that is a totally appropriate phase of life to do that. But as I said, you know, you're an infant. And you say to your friend, I'll never do it. I'll never do it. I, you know, I'm just big. I'm just big. I'll never get into that little thing. You know, and your friend said, I know, I just can't do it. Well, what, what gets you to do it is 24-7, your friends. <laughs> you know, your, your dear friends keep telling you you're small. And you join in, in the currency, in the exchange, in the language, and you tell them. And it's, you know, you support each other. So by the time you're an adult, You've done it. You've done what you thought was impossible. Why? Because you're in company where that is the currency. And it's the only currency to spend. And if you don't have that currency, you'll die. You know, I mean, you need it to get food. You need it to get love. You need it to belong. So, I mean, it's absolutely vital, that currency. 
and it still is vital. Where, you know, to the day you die, whether you're the Buddha or whoever, you you that that continues. However, the point being is that the you might say growing up is finding out who you are and uh, identifying and becoming responsible for that. How do you, to put it in these terms, how do you stabilize your personal identity? Because some people don't, you know. I mean, a few people with psychiatric problems don't stabilize. They don't. St they're, they're they're out to lunch, you know. They they <laughs> scattered. They're, they're schizoid. They they haven't got, you know. I mean, it's a sad condition. It's it's serious. But all of us have stabilized our, our uh, identity enough, enough, you know, deeply enough to function. You're not worried now. You don't wake up and say, who am I? Right? You don't have to keep going and sitting in a corner to remember who you are. Right? Close your eyes. I'm Richard. I'm Richard. I'm Richard. You don't have to do that. You've got it going. You know, you've got it going. You've stabilized your identity. All right. Now you wake up to the fact that your true identity is this openness. And the question is, how do I stabilize it? It's the same mechanism. It's not rocket science. People think, oh, it's some esoteric thing. I mean, how do you do it? I need to go and see some master. I need special tech. It's not. It's, it, 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 it's the same mechanism. What is that? Sangha, hang out with others who are aware of it and let them remind you and you remind me that this is what we're doing. In this meeting, I would say, at least for me, what is on the front burner is being aware of our true identity. So the whole hour and a half is about, you know, this is stabilizing. What's stabilizing? Just enjoying it, using it as currency, you know, spending it. <laughs> you know uh, capitalizing on it enjoying it being you know i'm saying you know look at the face notice you're looking at a no face that you're wide open there you are you see that's it. it's that same mechanism it's what is traditionally the sangha the community spiritual community what does that mean it's not it's not an obscure thing it's that if you are in company you will take on the moors the rules of that company to survive. And if you're in a company where you are only seen as being a thing, you, that's what you'll be. You know, you don't, you probably don't know anything else and who would question it, you know, because everyone agrees on it. But then when you open up and enter into communities where, like here, it, it, it is admitted and acknowledged and experienced, not just thought about, that you are also for yourself wide open and that that is currency. And I'm telling you and you're, uh, you know, at least perhaps acknowledging, yes, that's true, is currency, you know. Well, the uh, hang out with others. And if you feel confident enough, start to spend the money, start to give as good as you get, you know, because that in when you grow up and you stabilize your personal identity, it is not enough just to hear that what others tell you you are. You have to stand on your soapbox and say, yes, I am Richard. You have to do that. Because otherwise it just is like you need institutional care or something. Uh, you know, you're just receptive, passive. It's a matter of being active and uh, participating. I'm getting on a roll here. I'm having a rant. <laughs> so that is, you know, uh, that, that's what I think Andres is, is, is part of what the work here is, is growing a community where this is on the front burner, you know, in a totally natural way. And the thing about the Headless Way, which, which is brilliant, is that you can't do it wrong. You can't, you know, half see your no head. Uh, you can't see it a bit blurry or cloudy. So in this community, I say, there's absolutely no question that, you know, as he got it, as she got it, as they got it more, you know, job done. You can't see your head. You say, see the world over. We, you know, we're past that. Well, now we're in the market of uh, communicating about it, of spending the currency rather than, you know, should we let that person in? Is that person nonsense, bullshit? You know, it's a bit like 
when you're an adult, you know, hmm, does that person yet know who they are as an adult? You don't. You don't. You, you, the job done, right? I mean, here you can say, hmm, I wonder if Andres knows yet that he's Andres. You know, or Michael. Does that Michael know that he's Michael yet? Yeah, maybe we should get. <laughs> no. <laughs> you see, it's, it's about, it's about as kind of, you know, uh, it's, it's as silly as that to say, you know, hmm. The, the, I mean, people, some people say, I don't get it, you know, but I mean, that's, uh, they, they, they do, they just want attention. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible. <laughs> I think we'll have to edit this bit. Yeah. So I spend a lot of time in uh, Zoom groups uh, with people that I hang out with who enjoy this. And all my life, because I, for whatever reason, wanted to drink as deeply as I could of my true nature. You know, you've got your life, you know. I mean, why not have that as well as your human nature? Why, why not? You know, why not uh, spend that? You know, as you, you've got this, you know, infinite. It's like you've got infinite money in the bank, and you don't know about it. And then you start. Well, once you learn about it, you say, well, what's the point of it having being in the bank? You know, spend it. Well, that's a bit like you know, wake up to your true nature. Well. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Well, what I've done, just as it happened, was uh, all my life since I was a teenager, I have hung out with others who are headless. <laughs> well, what does that mean? That means that it's sort of normal in my world. It's, it's is it not sort of. It is normal in my world. Now, it may or may not be normal in your world, but if it isn't and you want it to be, it's possible, you know, and people say, oh, I, I just can't remain aware of it. Well, I mean, do you hang out with anyone else at all that is aware of their true nature? No, no. Well, then, surprise, surprise, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that you forget about it. All right, any questions, comments, you know, uh, legal, uh, legal disputes with me? <laughs> I guess I do have a question uh, about the, I, I appreciate uh, Lillian, your question about sensations in the body that, that what's coming up for me is, you know, that there, it seems there are a lot of these activities are focused on the visual field because of the, the directness towards this mechanism you're talking about, where we cut right to the heart of how I am relating to the map I have of all of these sensations and the meaning that all of the, them have together uh, as experience rolls on. My question, I guess, is uh, in, your, in your world, your headless community, the circle of friends that you're talking to, do you find, to me, my experience has been the more often I remember and stay in remembrance, uh, it, even when we were doing the exercises earlier, there's a there's a kind of sigh of relief and a relaxing of of the muscles and the just the viscera the holding together of the body holds less so soft being as you were describing. Um, my experience has been that it becomes softer over time and the body, this you know the apparent survival animal, trusts that it doesn't need to survive like it has felt thus far. Um, so this kind of gradual overtime of a settling or integration, a word outside of the headless way for this, this process, is, is this something, this kind of, uh, integration process with the body sensations? Is that something that you see in, uh, the headless way community and people that you work with and talk to? Definitely. Definitely. Yes. Uh, of course, uh, you, you. You can understand it as an arc, so that when you're a baby, you are soft being. As you grow up, you get hard and small and tense, and now you open out again. It's very physical. 
So I, I, the visual is an easy way in, but uh, it's all the senses. And so I'm now, uh, as you, you see, what you've done there is just brought my attention to the body, right? That's community. That is infectiousness. So now I'm, I am now aware that my body is big. That's relaxing. That's, that is, it's loving, it's friendly. It is, it's, it's, so do you see how that works? That's marvelous, you see, that's marvelous. Yeah, thank you. I have a comment and a question, Richard. First, uh, it was, well, this whole 75 minutes or whatever amount of time we've been together, it's been great. Uh, I do see what you say about the Sangha and talking about it, being infectious, and also your way to point out as to our true nature, uh, the whole conversation seemed like a, I'm comparing it to koan practice in Zen, but it seemed like intense, relaxing at the same time, and just freeing practice, which was, uh, I'm really grateful for that, thank you. Um, the question I have is about, I think a lot of people here, they already have, let's say a formal meditation practice from whatever tradition that is. I'm wondering how would you, uh, advice us to integrate pointing out exercises or the headless way into our practice or daily practice. Uh, would you recommend? I mean, I think this is my way of thinking too, which is very methodical. I I like usually to have directions and schedules, things like that. Uh, so I, I I know it doesn't have to be that way, but. I, I'm wondering if you have any way, any advice on how to integrate the headless way into our practice. Well, it depends on your practice. What's your practice? Uh, let's say I meditate 45 minutes in the morning, 45 minutes. But what at do night. you do in your meditation? I usually do either uh, breath counting meditation or a form of who am I sort of inquiry meditation. Well, then uh, you would explore this in your own way. But for example, you could be aware of your breathing happening in the stillness, in the, you know, just as it face to no face, it's sensation of breathing happening in the bodiless space. Mm -hmm. So the, the headless way is sort of two way. It, visually, the view out is of the field and the, where you're looking from is the absence here, is the space, it's consciousness, awareness. Well, you can apply that to the sensation of breathing is happening in the boundless space. That's a, you know, you, you're just not overlooking that space mm -hmm. or the, the counting, uh, you know, is happening in the no mind. Uh, so I, I think that uh, it, it, it becomes more like not doing anything than doing, you know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but you will find your own way. Uh, and I, I think that this is a creative edge. Uh, how, how, what, you know, how can you use these things that are valuable and uh, good reminders to now to to add on awareness, you know, for, of this. The, the other thing is that, I mean, uh, I don't know. Are we will we do another of these in in the future or something? Is that the Hopefully. idea? Yeah. If, if, yeah. If we well, can. I mean, then, <laughs> then, then you could say, look. Uh, we'll set one up in what, what X weeks or whatever it is. Everyone here knows that, you see. So then you, you've you set up a kind of rhythm, mm. right? And so you, if you, uh, the part, thing about practice is rhythm, right? You, you know, doing it once, that's not what it's about. It's doing it regularly. Mm. So it builds, it, you know, sort of build something so if uh, just an idea it's not uh, that if you have in mind okay so in x weeks we're going to do another one there's a rhythm so now you think oh, okay 
I uh, the pre I'm I'm starting a practice, if you like, a, a rhythm. Yeah, but I think that uh, you will find your own way, and and uh, I think that uh, part of the sangha is to, is to exchange ideas and exchange what you know. Uh, uh, to, you know things that work, uh, and be inspired by others, and mm -hmm. find that people's response is different from yours, but valid. You know, and their way of going about it is different, but there's some things in it that you can use. Yeah. Thank you, Richard. That's very helpful. You, you see, uh, the thing about the Headless Way is, uh, uh, I suppose I teach it, don't I? But um, what am I teaching? Well, I, I'm not teaching kind of knowledge about your true nature, because there's nothing to know, and, and you've got it. Uh, so uh, I, I am here enjoying the fact that we've all got it. I'm not here to say, no, well, I think you a bit more of this and, oh, no, that's not what, what this is about. This is about, uh, for me, um, exchange, you know, sharing my experience and understanding of something that we've all got. And your experience and understanding is different. And uh, if we have more time and more time, you know, I'm here to, to talk and share. But there'll be more exchange, you know, because uh, you can teach me, uh, you can share with me your response. And uh, unless I'm just being arrogant or something, you know, it, it's about uh, the one mysteriously enjoying being many so that it can share its different reactions with itself. Genuinely, as if it's talking to someone else, you know. I mean, there are five, five faces here, five voices here, potentially, in one consciousness. Well, that's wild. You know, I mean, this, this voice of mine is in your consciousness. It's coming out of your consciousness. Now, I'm now speaking currency, you know, a different currency, aren't I, from the normal one where this is my voice, not your voice. No, it's my voice. You can't have my voice. No, it's mine. <laughs> Keep your own. <laughs> you know. No, I, I got that. You know, you need that currency in order to function. You know, you couldn't function if you didn't know this is my voice and that's yours. All right, we've got that. But now that now you can enjoy hearing Richard's voice in your consciousness as if it's your own without losing your awareness that this is my voice. You've got both. You know, that's what sometimes scares people. They say, oh, I'm going to lose my identity. You don't. You don't. You've moved back and forth, you know, you, you can't, you, this is my voice, but on the other hand, all the voices are mine. Well, that's, that changes the equation. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, went off on one then. Do we have any last question? Me again. <laughs> You're irrepressible. Uh, yeah, it's your fault, of course. <laughs> um, this, this week, somehow, I started the week thinking, OK, this week I'm practicing having no opinions. Since I have countless opinions <laughs> that keep arising, oh, like, I don't know that. It was fantastic. I, I, I just released the opinion and then this big space opened without the, okay, I have to do this. I have, it was very, very free. And I can tell doing this, uh, these exercises with you <laughs> that uh, this becomes uh, very easy without the the flavor, oh, I have to remember to practice. I have to. So it's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. 
Yes, uh, you, you know, uh, there is a, a, a one of the maturing features, I would say, if I put it like that, is that you stop taking your spiritual temperature. What I mean is, you know, oh, am I doing it right? Or am I seeing who I am? Or, you know, is it still there? Well, you keep look. you know, you keep taking your temperature and having a look. And every time you look, you can't see your face. And after a while, I think, why am I obsessing about this? <laughs> it's always there. It's never going to go away, you know. You know, let it have a rest, for God's sake. You know, to, uh, relax. And uh, you, 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 it's always there when you want it. And it's not as if, uh, because you haven't been aware of it five minutes or five hours or five days, that you now have to crank yourself back up, you know, and get into gear. And finally, you're, you know, the engine's running and you're on and you wonder how long you're going to keep it going for, you know, because as soon as you start to think about it, you're obviously not, you know, all of that nonsense, you know. No, it, you look, it's 100% on, full power, you know, uh, uh, as it always was, always will be. Well, you know, after, after, it's a bit, you know, as you're growing up, you know, oh God, I can't remember my name. I mean, you probably had a, a phase when you, I can't remember my name. Like, what is my name? You know, well, oh no, I remember it now. Phew, phew, phew. God, I forgot it again. You know, well, uh, uh, after a while, you, you know, you, 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 you get it. You got it. You don't think about it. You're not going to, you just because you don't remember your name, you know, think of your name for an hour. It, 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 it's the same with this. It's, the same, it's, it's better, more natural, you know, you get, uh, cleaner, you know. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, you remember your name and you think, oh, God, I'm Richard. <laughs> you know, why would I want to remember that, you know? But when you remember who you really are, you go, oh, thank God. Oh. Now I know why I want to remember this. This is so good. You see, this is just, oh, I mean, it's a bit, instead of it being a program and a task, it's like falling in love. You want, you know, you want to be, you want to hang out with your true nature. You know, I mean, why would you not? Uh, you know, but if you forget about it for 10 minutes, I mean, just because you don't think of your beloved for 10 minutes don't, doesn't mean you don't love her. You know, in fact, to forget is to come back with refreshed kind of insight, isn't it? You, you can only enjoy the, you know, rem the joy of remembering who you are if you've, you know, seemingly forgotten it. So uh, that rhythm has a place and you, you relax and you, you don't beat yourself up if you haven't been aware of your no face for five minutes. <laughs> And it's so, you know, it's, it's like, you know, what is my name? What is my, I knew I'll have to, I should write it down in a book because then at least I know it's in the book and I know, I know what to do, you know. It, it, with the no head thing is, you know, how do you remember knowing point? You know, you don't have to look for a book. <laughs> you don't have to t ask your friends, you know. You know, I know this is rather embarrassing, but... Um, I've forgotten my name. I, I, I'd rather you didn't tell anyone, but, you know, but can you just remind me of my name? Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. I am. Um, God, what did you say? <laughs> well, I mean, this, you know, oh, God, I forgot my true nature. Who, who should I ask? You know, just look. <laughs> You better stop me, Andres. <laughs> Thank you so much, Richard. This has been such a special time. Really appreciate it. And uh, thank you, everyone, for sharing it with us. Well, a delight to hang out with you all. Uh, and uh, yeah, good. I, I, hope right. to see, I hope to see you all again.